Hello and welcome back to Gadgets and Toys. Today I'm going to share with you my DIY projects on the PG Gundam Axia. Instead of buying the LED system from Bandai, I have decided to customize one myself. In this way, I can customize my own lighting sequence and control the LED with my Android app. To keep this video short, I will only be focusing on the hardware aspect and the overall general approach I have for the project. I'll be providing some information of the software side regarding the Android and Arduino coding at the end of the video, so please watch out for it if you need help in that area. First off, let's go through the list of tools and components involved. Mainly, we have the only tools that we need is the soldering irons and solder. Next would be some wiring. You can choose different color for power line, ground line, and the control line. You can also use the same color for everything. That's totally optional. The main component would be the Arduino Nano Controller and the Bluetooth module. These are optional connectors on the PCB board where you can use to connect your wire to it and you don't need to desolder anything if you need wire removed. That will save you some time. That's also totally optional. And finally, we have here the RGB LED strips. This has 72 LEDs per meter, so it's very useful to be cut up to individual LED when needed. Next, let's take a look at the schematic wiring diagram. First up, we have the Arduino Nano Controller and the Bluetooth module. I have split the LED strip into 5 different paths for individual control. The red line represents the power line, 5 volts supplied to the LED strips, and 3.3 volts supplied to the Bluetooth module. The black lines are all the groundings. Green lines represent the data lines to LED strip, and the receive and transmit line to the Bluetooth module. The most challenging part of the project is figuring a way out to fit all those LED into the frame. The skull being one of the smallest area in the frame, so I need to use some sort of a cardboard to hold the LED in place and try to squeeze them in into the tight space that is available and make sure that all the LEDs stand in the right position to properly shine out the light. What you see here are various casings if you might call it, that is made out of cardboard to hold the various LED in place inside the frame. The next header will be running the wire through the different joints and parts of the frame and at the same time making sure that when you put them together, you need to have all the LED in the correct position. So that means sometimes I need to cut off certain part of the interior of the frame so that it can fit in nicely. This is the first dry run of the prototype board. The Android app itself is also the basic version where I just press a button to cycle through the power mode. Nothing fancy at this point. After testing, I am now ready to transfer the component from the prototype breadboard onto the prototype PCB. After all the soldering and such, the PCB is more or less ready. Take note that I use a socket seat for the nano controller so that in any case that the controller fail and I need to replace one, I don't have to resolder. I just need to pluck out and put in a new one. What you see here is more or less the final product. The version of the apps is also the final version where I have the three customized mode on top of the three standard cycles. Now to talk about some afterthoughts in retrospect. Thinking back, the wire I have used may be too thick in the cross section for this project. After all, this is my first one, so I have a lot to learn from it. My thinking would be to use the network cable to test out the network cable wires the fine one inside the network cable to see whether it can carry enough current to drive the LEDs. If it's successful, I will be using that instead for my next projects. 
If you want to skip the Android app, you can easily replace the control with a push button on the PCB board which I have actually on the project so that I can do some manual testing without the Android app. Totally optional too or you can make that the main control instead of an app. Like I mentioned earlier, I want to keep this video short just on the hardware aspect. If you need any help or assistance regarding the Android or Arduino coding, I have left some tutorial link in the description below. I'll also be providing the source code for my Android and Arduino. You can download it and use it straight away. So that's all I have for you today regarding my PG Gundam XCR DIY project. If you have any question, please ask in the comment section and I will try my best to answer them for you. If you enjoyed this video and are interested in more upcoming Arduino or Gundam project, please subscribe, click like, enable the notification button. Okay, thanks for watching. Bye.